this is a good opportunity to grab a beer that's not in the fridge. Here we go. Let's get ready here. I think this is the preferred position for this camera. Still not using this. Let's have a look here. So far so good. Hello everybody. So I'm just setting up the rest and then we're getting right into carving. Because that's today's idea. Alright. Saturday afternoon. I hope y'all are doing well. Cheers. Now, hello everybody. Welcome to a very impromptu little spoon carving session here. Um, hell has apparently frozen over because I'm carving a batch of something. Um, in this case, it will be my kayak spoon, uh, more or less known by folks out there. And um, this is just a very fancy version of this. I do not know what the camera is doing. Um, but something along these lines will be carved in a batch. So, what I have done so far already, and you see I'm jumping right into it, I have axed out several blanks so far. Sorry for that. All this stuff is lying over here on the table. Here they are. So, um, axed out several blanks from some maple that I harvested the other day. You can actually you can see the, the story on my Instagram channel. Um, and two of them have been rough carved already. And this one is going to receive a little bit more work in the bowl. And then here you can see I've got three more. So I just spent a couple hours down at the shop um, axing out three more of these. So five all together and the other ones are rough carved already. That took me about, I don't know. Uh, we've got maple here and we've got a couple of apple. And yeah, so that means jumping right into it. So they were axed all out um, with my journeyman axe that I left down there in the shop. Um, and there is a couple of really big news coming um, about all my tools. So today we're going to be using a bunch of tools that are all available from my website. Number one, um, of course, our bodger spit, very important to keep our sternum from bleeding and being very uncomfortable. So you can get this, of course, from my website. It's done from nice and waxy German and leather. I've been doing these for many years and um, they have been never so popular as they are now um, for very good reasons because um, it's of course really what you want to do. Protect your sternum, be comfortable here as you're bracing your spoon. Um, so today it's just going to be a little bit of a live demonstration. Um, if you're wanting to get into spoon carving a lot deeper and um, really understand all my systems, Triple C, um, Tenuchi for carving, power carving, body devices, all of this kind of stuff um, and all my reasoning behind all the stuff that we're going to do today you can find that on boon tv forward slash woodsman's finest and I just kind of um, lower down this sorry for that this tripod a little bit so you guys could actually better view and uh, while I'm doing this you can have a look at my mess there uh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Because every time I'm on a different platform, the camera is actually reacting a little bit differently. So this seems to be what YouTube wants to do. All right. So, budget speed. Um, I probably gonna bring this in a little bit closer, and then what I'm gonna do here. Probably this way is good, just like that. So here we are. First step we're going to do, um, grabbing my Swape Exploit, um, there is going to be of course another tool drop ready to ship coming up in April and we've got something pretty special right now um, going on, um, me and my partner Forge for that coming up. So stay tuned, that's going to be pretty exciting. We're working on a whole bunch of little improvements and little uh, 
So there's going to be a batch of a little bit different Sloyd knives available um, with the ever so popular all round hook. So uh, I think the first thing I'm going to be doing is um, just applying the same steps to all of these blanks. Um, when I carve, I usually, when I batch carve, um, whenever that happens every once in a decade, um, then I'm just um, trying to do the same steps on all of them. So right now we are going through the triple C method on these. Um, so the first C would be circumference. I've got a couple videos about those out and um, of course my courses that um, you find on Boon TV forward slash with the finest. Um, and of course the links are under all my videos. So the Swayback slide here is usually just available in my tool drops. Um, but there will be some Sloyd knife available from um, is this actually doing okay for you guys? Let's have a look. Maybe this way. Um, there will actually be a Sloyd knife of some sorts available for regular made to order purchase um, sometime soon. We're just working on uh, which one that's going to be and what configuration. All right, that's pretty good. Here we go. Check in with the, the gauges I have in my face, aka my eyes. Just keep checking for symmetry. So the, the goal is to get these to a stage where I can actually uh, put them in a paper bag and let them dry ever so slowly. Um, so I want to reduce them to about 80% or like 85% of their final um, makeup. Right, so that stage is gonna be it for now. So I'm just gonna move on to the next spoon. Um, by the way, if you feel like any techniques are like particularly dangerous or something like that, um, I know this might very often look like that, but rest assured that carving like this daily, there is very little safety measures in place, like um, the blood vessels and all these details that one should avoid. Having taught um, backcountry knife safety for young people and kids, um, there's a lot of safety and risk management thoughts going into um, every single step. And that's what I teach. Not to say that I'm not cutting myself every once in a while, but when I do, it's usually very minor. Very sharp knives are very, a big part of safety. Um, fatigue is absolutely your enemy. Efficiency, using your whole body and having very sharp knives are keeping you from fatiguing and then muscling things, getting frustrated and eventually making mistakes and hurting yourself. So my courses are very much built around these principles of um, efficiency. There's a lot of sharpening courses on that page. Um, Altogether, it's four now for a total of about eight hours. Um, sharpening straight blades, hook knives, axes, and building strops. And I just uploaded a in depth stropping, building, and understanding class last week. It was very popular. Right there. That is maple now, nice and straight grained. I was very lucky to hear someone in the area cut down a tree and I just jumped into my boots, looked around where it was and it happened to be just about 70 yards away from my apartment here in a pretty rural, rural area. Um, and I was able to take some pretty big chunks of wood home gonna keep me busy for the next few months. It's pretty tough but it's also a rather predictable and straight grained compared to the apple that can be a little bit of a pain. So there we go that's it. That stage is pretty much done. Again, maybe just a little bit here. Put that one to the side and grab the next one 
another apple of pike. As far as I understand, there is a check. There you go. Servus Matthias. All right. Apparently there is a live chat. Um, as I said in the announcement, bring your questions. Um, that's usually something I only do on my course page, but I decided why not. Let's just run one here and get a couple of little questions out of the way. So our Swayback Sluits that I designed based on um, my time in Japan and like the, the overall ergonomics that I appreciate in knives made for use um, are made from a steel called 9HS that has um, quite a few things in common with bearing steel. Um, takes a very fine edge and um, keeps it for a very long time. All right, you see these knives are flying through Apple, which is one of the tougher woods. Boom, that's there. Just the first of the triple C, the circumference, roughed. I'm really wondering where that live chat is supposed to be. Oh, there you go. Sorry, folks. A wooden bow. Yes, I've carved several wooden bows because I'm an archer and... Um, Yeah, man, Angelo, um, keep trying, bud, keep trying. Hey, Alvin, nice to week on my course page, and you are very welcome to chime in, and um, there's going to be all the little itsy-bitsy details about this shape. Um, other than that, I can just... Tell you to keep trying. Uh, it seems like a very simple spoon and it's extremely hard to get right. <laughs> Here we go. Um, bring in something I really love using for roughing, which is my all round hook in the smaller configuration, the six centimeter version um, that I designed them to be very, very compact on the front and wider on the back. The same um, comes in a seven centimeter, which I call my absolute all round, but I love this for roughing in combination with a octagonal 15 centimeter handle which gives me a lot of leverage so this is the little itty bitty it's not itty bitty but it's rather small and it's very very aggressive and this is what i use especially on um, tougher woods like this apple and maple both very very tough um, to just get me a quick roughing in order to um, initialize the second c which is the crank let me see uh, i never see these oh there you go Servus nach Berlin. So here we go. Um, usually something I like doing on my thighs. I know thighs are not very um, <clears throat> popular as far as um, carving, but um, it's very safe if you know what you're doing, if you have stops in place. And um, I don't do this kind of stuff on the inside of my thighs, um, but of course I just keep it on the outside here. Um, only opening and closing of the hands, um, as, I, as I always explain um, in my in-depth courses, there is very efficient and safe ways. This maple was cut in spring, which is not ideal in my opinion, because it has a lot of sap in it, um, makes it very heavy. I find it a little bit harder to carve in a way, um, carrying those logs. Uh, kind of Got me done for a couple days. Um, and so in spring, the sap's running, of course, 
which makes drying easy, um, a little bit harder as well because they just take longer to dry, which is just a little bit more unpredictable. But rather than pulling towards me, which is a lot safer and I can really I can really control this movement. So next up I'm gonna jump to different hook knife. I don't want this um I don't want the wood to dry with these perpendicular pheasants. Because when it's dry it's gonna be a lot tougher to get them smooth, so I wanna smooth them out in the right direction right away. But you can tell the grind we put on these is the result of a decade of playing with hook knives and this is why this is running very very quick and easy and this is some of the really most tough wood that I carve on um, just rather tight grained beautiful but tough uh, um, maple okay incoming the classic tube cam here um, Hey buddy, so good to see you man. Missing Japan every single day. As soon as those borders are opening, I gotta be right here. Um, so we've got the the roughing um, in a cross direction and now I'm bringing in the two cam. So this is the six centimeter version, which is for me a sweet spot. Um, we put an integral forge on here, which is just gonna um, keep it a little bit First of all, I like the transition more, and second of all, there's just a little bit more strength um, and less um, flex in the tang, which is just something where you lose a lot of energy. And now, of course, it's three centimeter diameter octagonal handle, which is important to get um, a lot of purchase. So, again, most of the actual carving is done by my off hand, my right hand is just guiding the bevels. And you can see there's really no effort in running this thing. A lot of leverage, cleaning up those pheasants. Dot net and dot com. And these are exactly the versions that are on production. That's a the production version, so these are not anything particular special. So the six centimeter is is great for anything that's spoon carving, uh, that's eating spoon size. Um, five centimeters, in my opinion, leaves just a little bit too much pheasants, and six and a half usually doesn't quite fit into eating spoons. But this is why I decided that way to just go right in there. Um, This is still green, so this is going to be finished at another point, but I don't know if you can actually see this is pretty much done. I don't know how many minute that, minutes that was, but it was fast. You see there is no pheasants in it left. And that's why I love maple, because it rocks that way. So there's another one that I just did um, across before, so I'm just going to finish that one as well. Very quickly with this Tuga cam, running a combination of different styles of cutting, implementing the entire blade length. Different parts of the blade have different advantages as far as leverage. And that's the reason, as I always say, for getting a symmetric type of hook, which is like a Tuga cam or one of my three quarter hooks. That's great for bowls and, um, and cooks and stuff because these knives you can use at any part of the blade. They're going to give you the same results. That is the very big advantage. Um, there's great advantages to the all-round hooks as well. 
Um, but this is the advantage of the symmetric curves. This thing already smoothens out very, very nicely. Um, just gonna run one of my body vices. This is 100% safe. I'm just one person who is pointing out that um, what I'm doing is careless and dangerous, but um, yep, that's just about risks. Um, dissecting risks, finding risks and managing them. Um, carving is very much that. It is a risk per se because we're working with extremely sharp tools. Um, but there is of course many, many ways to minimize that particular problem. All right, so that's the back nicely done. And then there's a little bit of transition. I'm not trying to really completely creep up on the grain right now because I'm aware of the fact that this will not finish in a green state. This is why we, I mean, it can, but it's very diff difficult and I rather just let it dry and then put the finishings, finishing cuts on. They're going to be smoother. So this is what I would call like a 75% 75% spoon uh, and that's going to go into some paper bag. Just gonna, there's a lot more material to reduce, but I first want to let it dry and see what it does and then decide where to take material off. All right, now there's a little bit on this apple spoon that needs to be taken off. I'm leaving a little bit more on these apple spoons because this wood has the tendency to twist and turn and warp and such, especially using hardwood and sapwood in the same spoon. There's the potential for really good looks, but it's also a lot more difficult to let it dry and still be somewhat straight. And so I'm leaving a little bit more material on here just in case I need to adjust something at the point that it's dry to work with. Keeping these knives extremely sharp is really what helps me going through this effortlessly and um, with very little fatigue. So this guy is kind of dry like this. It's already a little bit thinner than I would like it to be, but it came out of a very strange piece that um, was just kind of a 50-50 you know, chance anyways if it becomes a spoon or not. Um, so I'm gonna give it a go. Let's see, if not, then not much lost. Hey, Sergey. Sergey is my partner in Ukraine and we've been using, we've been working for three years on bringing these tools to you. Um, very successfully, I want to say. There's actually a giveaway coming up because we passed 700, well, 500 orders and over 700 tools shipped out in the last year and a half. I'm pretty mind blowing and we want to say thank you. So we're planning some type of giveaway for that. All right, so just quickly going to do this spoon here. Um, and then we're going to go to the other knife again, to the Sloyd knife and get onto the crank. Believe it or not, this, this apple is actually smoother and easier to carve. I wouldn't say smoother by any means, um, but it's definitely easier to carve. It's also drier, so it's pretty weird because usually apple it would be extremely tough, but I think that this maple, in comparison at least, I mean with birch, both of these woods would seem like granite. But this knife makes extremely fast work, even with this. 
but of course I'm feeling my form for sure. All right, now bring in the Tuka cam again. Where did I put that thing? Oh, over there. Here we go. So as I said before, I just want to get these horizontal, uh, these um, perpendicular marks out because they're going to be a lot tougher later um, when they dry. These these flakes coming off here, they're just an absolute delight. And they're thin, you can look through, they're very crisp. Um, apple is just something else. Also the smell, it's great. Alright, this is one of the body vices. So you're getting a little bit of info right here. What you see me do right now. It's part of the body vice system, implementing different body parts as a um, hold fast, so to say. And that's just really important. Look at this thing. I mean, they're just absolutely flawless. Um, great sharpness on these knives, extremely good edge retention. Um, can bring them back with different strokes almost immediately has a lot to do with the the heat treat the steel we choose um, and of course the edge geometry every single part of these knives is um, backed by experience and reasoning so it's not just what looks good or something what you see on the internet um, then just repeat it or something this is really um, what I've found to work and not work in my own experiments over the years. My own hook knives that I forged. There we go. That's that. I'm gonna leave it like this, put it aside, last one, and then we're gonna hop back on the knife. So another apple one. Let's see how long this is gonna take. Let's see. Can stay under a couple of minutes for the entire following. The surface is always tougher after you know it is drying very quickly, and then underneath you actually have a little bit softer layers of wood so it's very important to right away get through the surface and put a nice gradual hollow on there I mean these spoon bowls are not symmetrically hollowed Anyways, I really hope I'm gonna find some birch soon because my arms are screaming at me. So it was about a minute and a half, something like that, maybe two minutes for that. I'll just add a minute here. The sapwood and the hardwood, of course, behave differently. It looks pretty good to me. Front part. I'm just gonna switch it around. This tube can really is a game changer and so I always recommend to have 
one of my all-round hooks and one the first and then as soon as you wanna or can afford add a six centimeter tool cam and you're gonna be basically able to do anything you want to so there's another minute and a half of that and this is very close to finish and then once this is dry I'm gonna give it another run all right, now that we got that, uh, we're actually going to put these hook knives aside for good for today. And um, very important to stay hydrated, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Here we go. All right. Where is the slide knife that we need? All right here. In comes the slide knife again. Very important to in between, just give it a little strop. This is actually the strop that we built the other day in the strop building course. Very, very um, easy to build, but you, you need to know the details about the carry material, the compound, and what's really important to look for, um, i.e., advantages, disadvantages of different materials, different. Um, polishing compounds, etc. etc. So, at this point, I'm not too worried about making anything dirty. I just want a very well hold honed knife to quickly make work of these rather tough woods. It's just so much fun, these curls coming from this very dense. Apple, it's it's hard to see. Um, so I sometimes make pictures and put them on Instagram just because the curls alone are just. I very often don't even want to clean them up. I'm not like chuck it in the in the stove, but I just want to keep them. Using the gauge that you got in your face, your eyes are incredibly good at detecting um, symmetry, curves, proportions, straightness. You just gotta use them. Very important. Use your eyes. Be aware of where your knife's going. It might sound silly, but You'd be surprised how often I don't do that. It's just, it's really from wood to wood different, but you get this with um, the right carving technique and, and sharp knives, just gonna give you this delight. Different wood is, of course, behaving differently. But it has a lot to do with getting to know your your bevels and uh -huh. there's a little bit of asymmetry in that spoon. That's the, one of the most difficult things about this thing. That shape's living. Off its symmetry. Very difficult to get right. Very frustrating at times. Okay, that's close enough for now. Now, the roughing of these spoons is really the fastest thing, except for the axing. When it gets um, the finishing, finish carving is when it gets extremely slow, just because of the symmetry and because of these spoons that hold up longer because of their material, different wood. Um, they usually just have the tendency to be a lot tougher when they're finished. Oh, got a little bit shorter, but that apple's already. Warping and drying in a weird direction, and it's still pretty much green. So, 
and that's just one reason why I tried to leave a lot more material in these. All right, let's see if there was any more comments or anything. <laughs> Tom, always good for the weirdo comment in the bunch. What kind of beer am I drinking? Um, it's from this area here, Upper Austria, Riedel. Some, like, whatever, some anniversary edition. You know, these breweries are really old. We've got breweries here, a lot of them are from... <laughs> Love you, man. Uh, cheers, Tony. That gives you such a carving boner, that part. I mean, it's my favorite part, I think, of the entire spoon. Um, and the apple is just so dense and smooth. You're getting these, yeah, silly, silly, um, how nice and smooth they are and how pretty. I gotta put them aside and do something with them. Like, they're just too nice on this wood. And apple is something you don't get a lot because obviously when someone has an apple tree, they usually do not opt to cut it down. In this area here, there's a lot of apple um, and people sometimes run into the issue that they might have a rot inside or something, so they might cut it down, but it's usually just very much by accident that I'm driving down some countryside road or something like that um, and just see, ah, crap, piles of apple um, lying somewhere, apple wood, and then I usually just walk up to the, the farmhouse and ask if I um if I can just um use some and then I, I carve the people usually a spoon so with this um there was a farmer and I carved them three cooking spoons from each of the, the woods that I got to take from him um and yeah so the other day I got this maple uh, I'm gonna carve those two guys who cut that down and actually cut up some pieces into smaller um, trunks for me with the chainsaw. I'm gonna make them a couple of cooking spoons. I usually go for cooking spoons because even you know non nerds can use them. Um, eating spoons are a thing that most of the people out there don't know really how to do. Um, all right, so that is the first part of the the crank figured out, uh, which is the second C in the triple C method that I came up with to make this like three-dimensional shaping more accessible for people. Alrighty, no. Oh, that's pretty close. Alright, a little bit more. You don't really have to get it dead on because <clears throat> like I said there's a lot of drying and warping still happening with these spoons for sure before they're done. This apple after all, but you might as well kind of get it right from the start. Let's see. Alright, now to the second part of that crank. The second C in the triple C. So if you want to learn more about this triple C thing and what that is and how it might help you um, going through your carving journey um, rather than just how I call, call it like beavering yourself in from all sides to hopefully find the spoon in the middle of a piece of wood, um, you can find a few introduction videos on my YouTube channel and then you find a Three hour in depth class about that on my page, boon to be forward slash woodsmith's finest. Um, there is about 64, 65 hours of course material on there now. Um, carving, sharpening, decoration, carve alongs, a little bit of leather craft, um, basics, and every month there's usually two courses added. Um, you can purchase the courses one by one 
for anywhere between 10 and 20 bucks, which is still a bargain for all courses being beyond two hours. Um, but you can also get an instant access to all the 64, 65 hours of course material at once by becoming a member. And of course that is a monthly thing. So for 29 bucks a month, you can cancel that anytime. You get access to all of it at once, which is um, also a bloody bargain for um, speeding up your learning curve and learning process by months and years. That's the point of getting a coach. I do it myself, getting coaching in sports, etc. Um, because uh, you get to tap. And Last one we're gonna do this to is this maple spoon, which should also give super nice curls, but gonna be a little bit tough, so I need a little bit of a motivator. All right, now let's do this one. Should maybe not look at the camera while I'm carving with a particularly sharp knife. Oh, cool. Okay, that's good. And that one is not yet good. The crank is arguably the most important thing in a spoon, as I always say, um, it determines in very many ways the usability and comfort. So I take that part quite seriously. That's, that wood is tough. It's so tough that I, that I miss my apple, which is really not quite I want to make this a little bit deeper, that crank a little bit more pronounced. So um, some of the other spoons were actually, um, this one here was tangential, um, but this one's going to be a radial one. So um, I have some opinions um, about the strength differences between radial and tangential. And also the carvability. There is a little bit of a difference, in my opinion, um, carving tangential orientation or radial orientation. They have a difference, of course, in optics, and both of them can turn out to be very attractive. So uh, I think you can make both look good. It's not going to be as deep of a crank, but it's going to be enough to make it comfortable. And that's the point. How much do I charge for a large spoon? Um, that really depends on the shape and the decoration, but um, large cooking spoons start somewhere around 45, 50 euro plus shipping. Um, there's all types. This one here is available right now. This is a very complex one though, um, with a faceted bowl. This is one of my Sidewinder cooking and serving spoons. This one was actually done in Hornbeam, which is such a tough wood that this is probably gonna survive a nuclear strike. Trying to avoid that wood now, but it's really awesome and it's very nice and dense and everything. It's just so hard that it literally keeps me from sleeping at night because my hands are numb. Okay. So that's that. Take that a little bit further down. The offset here is always a little bit tougher.
Okay. Always make sure to work in, in ridge lines and use your angles. In other words, don't try to take whole surfaces off at once because there's no point in doing that. You just want to create facets, little ridge lines, take those off. First time I saw that was in a, in a book written by a Hidatsa Native American about Native American or plain style bow building. I'm um, written sometimes in the late, at that time I was about 10. And so it's what I call the, the rules of angles. It's even used in combat sports, which I used to train for most of my life. Um, angles are important because angles are can be strong or weak, depends. But you just gotta be aware of them. And creating these angles, these ridge lines, they can either um, serve to make something like the integral strength of something and stability bigger. But as far as carving, it makes it more efficient because instead of taking wide surfaces off, um, very inefficient, you just get to take little peaks off. And um, very, very nice pheasants coming off from this thing too. All right, so that one turned out just a little bit more flat, uh, but it's still good. And this maple will be finishing like glass, I can tell already. It's still completely green and very, very high in moisture because it was cut in spring, which is like I said, not ideal but it um, has already some type of luster to it. So when this is dry, this is gonna be stunning, which is fun. Probably gonna do some carbonizing experiments with this. One last pass. I'm gonna put this aside. Yeah, that works. Now, a little bit more tough part. It's gonna be gonna be the back, matching everything. And here, I like to bring in a little bit of boldness. I mean, I like to carve boldly, anyways. Um, but the boldness is kind of a um, experience paired with um, knowledge of the fundamentals. It's a kind of confidence, but that confidence has to be gained. And I feel like experience is, is good, but knowing why certain things are working or not is very important. So I feel like boldness is kind of an equation of Experience and repetition. Paired with confidence in your understanding of the matter. So roughly the back, just taking a lot of material off. I'm using the other lines that I established already as guidelines. And this is why I'm a little bit more diligent about those because I know that I'm gonna be using those later for other quicker cuts. So taking my time a little bit in the first place is good because then I can trust whatever I did in the first place on the upside. And now, knowing that these need to go, and what else? Sorry, just quickly implementing my Lap here's a rest. All right. I'll put 
up here. And we'll click there. All right. There's a little mini burly looking thing in that bowl, which is cool. Getting quick, close. I know what material I want and what I don't want. But this is some hardwood. I gotta keep looking for birch. Even cherry is kind of like a holiday at this point. Well, so far so good. Right, this is gonna go into the drying pile. Um, keep a little bit more extra material on here, just in case. Unfortunately, it really reflects. I don't know why the camera is so bad right now with this, um, but it is quite rather light colored wood. And yeah, I'm gonna want a little bit extra material in here, but it's decently symmetric. Um, and then there's, so this is what I call about 70%, something like that, 70, 75% uh, from a log. All right, let's see if there's any questions. Oh, there are a few, I'm sorry guys. Um, thanks, Danny. Jeremy, um, it is a type of heat treating. Um, I have heard it first. Um, it's carbonizing um, in Scandinavia and um, with Bamboo, bowl building in Japan, so um, that's what I call it. I've got a course for that. Um, has a few advantages, so. Uh, Danny, Danny, do you sell? Uh, nope, I don't um, use them or sell them for barbecue because, um, uh, I don't know, they're just um, getting all mixed up with, I don't know, salt dust and everything. So I don't do that. And I don't think anybody here in Europe really cares for that kind of stuff. Not too many people at least. So uh, let's quickly run over those two apple spoons. And then I'm gonna get out of here. Do some, oh yeah, that's a little bit easier. Do some quick shopping for tomorrow's Easter brunch. Um, that's also the only time in my life when the word brunch comes over my lips. I have a lot of ramson or beer leak, whatever you want to call it, growing outside here, just down by that creek behind the house. And I thought I'm going to do something with that, but need some ingredients. go I'm using the whole body as much as possible very nice finish on this apple of course not surprised I'm always finishes beautifully but with this apple here that has a slight amount of spalting 
it actually um, is a little bit easier to carve already. Um, I find that spalting um, makes a lot of tougher woods easier to carve, of course, because of the micro microbial um, decay and breaking down of the wood. Easy, um, similar to when you age or hang meat or something like that. There's just lots of um, microbial um, stuff happening. Uh, it's the same with um, wood for carving. I personally only carve beech, for example, when it's spalted, because otherwise it's extremely hard, no fun to carve at all. But when it's and then there's other woods um, like birch that um, I never carve spalted because I wouldn't say never, but there's about a time window of eight seconds when it's actually nice to carve. Um, before it goes completely bunky, punky and, and becomes a sponge with weird smell and not integral, integrally sound at all. All right, here we go. Now I'll just um, sport those pheasants, use those pheasants. Day one apple wood is actually the less tough to carve. That maple is really nice, but if I really want to keep doing batches like this, um, I will definitely look for some birch or certain types of cherry. If you're interested in um, what woods to carve with and my opinions on different carving woods, um. Please check out that video on my channel. I made a quite long video about woods for carving um, in about 2018, I think, um, in Japan. And it has a lot of information in there. So just browse the channel, please. There's a bazillion videos on there. And you will find that video. It goes in depth about different types of wood. And what to look for, what to watch out for, etc. All right, I just need a little bit more work and then moving on to the last for today. My fingers are so done that my phone actually doesn't recognize them as fingers anymore. So my touch screen is just um, boycotting my hands. It usually um, organic and wouldn't open the screen. Which is kind of understandable because there's no blood flow in them. I can't tell you guys how crucial these Borger bibs are. They're not really just like to protect you from your knife at all. It's not necessary, but um, they're really there to protect your sternum from having this sharp piece of wood poking into your sternum while pressing it against there. It's just unbelievably uncomfortable. Um, so yeah, this one is ready to go into the drying pile. Like I said, I'm gonna keep a little bit more actually a lot more meat in, in here, just to make sure. I've got some extra material in, in case things are going a little bit sideways during the drying process. And um, so this one is gonna be the last one of the day. Um, a quick strop, can't tell you enough good things about stropping. It's really what most carvers do. Um, I would say, depending on the carver, between 60 and 80% of the time, we're actually stropping rather than going through any type of sharpening process. So this is really just a fine honing stage and done in the right way with the right strop and materials. 
um, you won't have to sharpen a lot at all. All right, giving this pop a little bit here and then putting the second part of the the second C, second part of the second C of the triple C method into effect. Oh yeah, that is rifling through there. The steel is something else. Looking forward to April's edition of the all-round combo. It is coming. We're just on the final planning stages because there's going to be a couple of differences to the last time's tool drop in time. Um, courses etc. Please hop on to the website woodsmansfinest.net um, and check out the newsletter. I do not send out newsletters very often because I personally find it extremely annoying to constantly get meaningless updates for any little crap that a website is doing but um, some of these things are useful because there's usually a limited edition of those ready to ship or round hooks or uh, round combos um, and so that's a move that you can do in order to be notified in time other than that I will announce it of course here as well on YouTube and I announce it and promote it big time on Instagram woodsman's finest or woods, woodsman's underscore finest it is there my main platform here we go we refine that angle a little bit this apple is just amazing Questions? Nope. Nothing. I can only say take the opportunity, folks. Usually these QAs are rather only happening on my course page, so. There's some weird grain here and I do not know how this is going to turn out once dry. I'm a little bit afraid. Something's weird. Something weird's going to happen there, but I will see. I don't know. A lot more than, let's say, maple or, or birch. So you get potentially amazing looks and grains and great carving experience, super nice dense surfaces, but you also get a lot of unpredictability. Totally blown out the exposure. Unfortunate. Yep, it's fine. It's pretty good too.
Okay, last one. Done. Time to put that knife away. Bring that thing up a little bit. Where are we here? One, two, three, four, five. If you go, these will be available very shortly. Maple and apple will be there in different configurations, but they're going to be all the same. You would take size and shape and uh, I'm gonna put those probably on Instagram first and then on my website now they're gonna go into a paper bag and into a wooden box and yeah let's just see if there's any last couple of questions otherwise I'm gonna get out of here Oi. Oh, weird Did I cramp right in the middle of that hand Thanks, Matt. Happy Easter to you, bud. Have a good one. Enjoy. Apparel is also available. For Woodsman's Finest. Just saying. These are so much nicer, these caps, is than the than the Yupon. And this is a Yupon, but not the, the trucker cap. These are so much easier. How many beer, Danny? You got some questions, bud. Um, how many beers do I drink while I carb? I don't know, maybe one a day or something like that, and then another five at night. No, that's not. No, you just gotta, you know, just gotta stay hydrated because you're constantly like this is physical activity. Um, you can't just drink beer or something or coffee. You just gotta drink water. Happy Easter, bud. Alvin, thanks very much, man. You stay safe as well. All right, for everybody tuning in now, um, there's been an hour and 12 minutes of um, carving kayak spoons with um, all my different tools. So I'm just gonna run the spiel as always. If you want to learn how to do this with a system rather than just going like you can find it on my website under online courses up in the main menu website is woodsmansfinance.net or woodsmansfinance.com um, you find the online courses up there um, 65 66 hours um, memberships and purchases of courses they run somewhere from five bucks i think 10 bucks to 20 bucks the courses are all two three three and a half even four hours long so there is all the info in there as far as systems all of my sports background martial arts combat sports etc over the last 25 years um, systematically teaching skills has gone into these courses so i like working with verbal cues with um with um bridges with any type of um, analogies so that's how i teach you find all that stuff there all my tools are on woodsmansfinest.com um, in the steel carving tool section you find all my axes um slide knives the hook knives, different type of gouges, anything from crooked to straight gouges um, that are also used, of course, in my Kuxa carving courses. So anything you see in the courses will also be available. Um, some of the tools are actually um, readily available. Right now we have 10 Wayfarers, 10 Journeymen and 5 Karelia Axes ready to go. So you don't have the 8 wait, eight week or 9 week waiting period, but um, right now um, it takes about 1 or 2 days to put the handles in. Um, and they're shipping out very, very quickly. So all of these axes that I've designed based um, on all the years of using different axes, different steels, forging axes, etc. Um, the balance point, all of the, the thought process that goes into how I use axes and why they should balance and um, work in a, in, in a certain way, using gravity, being less fatiguing, um, being more efficient, using, um, like I said, gravity, being more accurate, safer etc all of that goes into those axes and they're available there journeyman the wayfarer and the karelia three different weight um sections of different weight categories for different type of carving and for different type of carvers 
or carburesses. I don't know. Anyway, either way, so um, they are all available there. Um, and there is actually uh, five tools right now prototyping. Um, so there is a lot going on. Um, I have two vintage draw knives. Um, or like I have a vintage draw knife that is, I don't know, 50 years old that I've been using for the last 10 years, carving paddles, carving bowls, etc. Um, and I'm producing two that I'm testing over the next few weeks or months rather because you know, stuff never goes right on the market. I'm not trying to just purely make money with them because, you know, there's a lot of reputation and my principles on the line. Um, but when I usually get the tools, like with the axis, it took us, I think, 11, 12 months and then we did some improvements later. So altogether, it took us probably um, a year from the, f the first prototypes, um, drawings, all kind of stuff to the final two axes. And then it took us another half year, seven months for the Karelia um, and all the other tools usually take between three and eight months um, from the prototype and the different um, drawings and different proportions to actually the market right um, versions. So even this one here is not the final version but there has been improvements made after this and you just saw how that went through the woods. So um, I never stop changing stuff and like communicating that um, talking different steels, talking different heat treats, etc. So all of this goes into the tools. Um, and yeah, so that's a very big thing for me. And then yeah, anything else? Um, Borger spips, um, my different strops, the Sloyd strop, that's like a double-sided strop that also can be used on the inside of your hook knives or gouges. It's one of my proprietary designs um, that is also available on Lutheran's Finest. And what else? Um, for belts, etc. all this kind of stuff, you can um, you can contact me privately and Sloyd knives, any type of custom Sloyd knives are coming out um, regularly on my Woodsman's Finest Instagram page. So every so once in a while, I take a couple of blades on the side um, and I just do something a little bit more fancy with them and they are fortunately very popular um, because these Sloyd knives are just something we have for our whole life. So it's, it's awesome to just put a little bit more um, bizarre into them, right? So, yeah, Danny boy, you should. You absolutely should. So, Brian. So if not, people are grabbing those calls and that. Yeah, man. Um, they're like flying off the shelves. Um, because there's a lot of value in those, and I make sure that the the Sloyd knives are like a little bit more of an overall craft knife. But there's I forgot about saying that there's two more Sloyd with a different um, geometry. I wanted to do some improvements to geometry. So in the end, there's gonna be three different Sloyd knives. Um, and they're all three very different. They're all three a little bit different as far as purpose. And the sway is gonna stay there. The problem with these blade only things is that there is, um, after it went through all the stages, um, there is just no way they can be very cheap, so to say, as a blade only option. So at the end of the day, us putting a handle on or me putting a handle on and then a sheath with it um, is still a way, way higher value than if you just get the blade because the blade unfortunately is not going to be a lot cheaper and I know this is very difficult to understand why that is um, and there is some certain things that I'm just not talking about because after all this is a business and, um, but and I'm just um, Having certain things that I don't want to talk about and disclose because it just has to do with financial things. Um, but I can just tell you that the at the end of the day, um, the very basic version with a handle and a sheath is very high value um, for what you get. And so I haven't really figured out a way how to make it feasible and to make it economic for everybody involved to make them blade only. Um, but we're doing the, the simplest, best handles we can do with this really nice and super straight grain, very tough ash. Uh, it looks great, it's very customizable. You can carve it yourself um, a little bit more. You can paint it, you can just chip carve it, you can burn it, you can do anything with it. And so the basic Sloyd knives come either with that or they come with a black horn beam handle that becomes a little bit fuzzy over the first parts of times of using, um, which is great because you don't want to have any slippery, slippery type of surface on any of your tools. It, 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 um, 
leads to grabbing, grasping, fatiguing, and eventually to um, uh, tendonitis, um, golf elbow, tennis elbow. And I've fought that for two years, not being able to lift anything with cru like being in excruciating pain um, at night and stuff like that. So I'm really a big proponent for big handles, um, lots of pheasanting, lots of purchase, um, long oversized um, and not slippery varnished or any of that crap so ideally rough um, which is not always looking great but do anything possible to keep these tool handles nice and attached to your fingers to the in inside creases of your fingers um, and not make it slip and slide or like rotate in your hand it's a personal thing I want to share all the time because there is um, repetitive motion injuries that really, really wreck your day. Um, so that's something very important. I always want to just point out and this is why the handles are often designed the way I do them and stuff like that. So um, without further ado, uh, I'm going to get out of here. Um, I hope you enjoyed this live session. I'm not going to do these too often, but um, every once in a blue moon, I think this is fun. Um, other than that, I just really want to get this value valuable information i think it is to um to the people who really go a step further and are always so kind to support me because after all um they keep the lights on in here and they allow me to keep up my research and keep up my my work and and all of the information experiences in turns um flying right back or like being induced right back into the courses so um that's the way i see it and that's the way it works and a lot of the support also goes into new camera equipment, a new phone, a new um, microphone, all of these kind of stuff. So it's kind of a healthy circle that just keeps rolling. And I want to buy a new guitar. Um, just joking. So I hope you guys are having a beautiful weekend, um, beautiful Easter if you celebrate. So if not, then just um, I hope you're having a great weekend and stay safe. And um, I hope to see you around sometimes. Thanks very much for your time. I'm going to catch you later. Cheers. Thanks, Danny boy.